welcome back to class and uh, very excited that you're back here with us as we uh, jump back into eschatology, uh, which that's just a fancy term for the end times. And uh, we've already covered some different things. And um, I mainly want to start off this by saying um, how good God is and how thankful that I am um, for him. You know, we're not appointed under wrath and, and Jesus Christ has saved us. Um, our pastor was reading last night out of Romans 8 and he talked about how nothing will separate us from the love of God. And I know we get the idea sometimes when you get saved with the mistakes we make, the different things we go through, how there's no way that God would ever love us and or God has stopped loving us. I mean, how in the world can I be saved if I'm living like this? Uh, but I love how this Bible says that nothing, I mean, it goes through this whole list that none of these things, and I highly encourage you to read it, none of these things will ever separate you from the love of God. And, um, and that's something that should be very, very encouraging to us. And uh, we're actually even going to see that today as we study out the tribulation period. You know, last time we talked about uh, the rapture versus the second advent or the rapture versus the second coming. And uh, just show the differences because they're not the same event. And we're talking about these different things. But the next calendar, the next event on God's prophetic um, timeline, his prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Excuse me. And um, what has happened up to this point, you know, obviously we know we have the Old Testament, everything God did through there. And the Old Testament lasts all the way until Jesus Christ died. You know, the Bible is very clear that um, there's not a New Testament until the death of a testator. Jesus Christ has started that New Testament period. And all the Old Testament, God has dealt with the Jewish people. You know, that, that was his main emphasis. And even when Jesus Christ comes... Jesus says, don't go to the Gentiles. He says, go into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so Jesus has primarily, not, not, now that does not mean that when Gentiles have come, you see that throughout the stories in the Gospels, how Gentiles will show up and say, God, please use me. You know, I, I just want the crumbs from the master's table. And God would um, you, heal that person or, or use that person, impact that person's life, and then turn right back to the Jewish people. And so you saw that. And so his ministry was down here to reach those people but as you know, the Jewish people rejected. You know, the Jewish people, um, the Messiah was sent for them, and they said, no, we don't want to do that. They end up crucifying him. Well, as you know, um, well, and if you don't know, this is a great time to be able to be refreshed on all these things as well. Um, after they rejected, um, Jesus Christ dies. The emphasis is now being turned over in the book of Acts over to the Gentile people uh, because of their rejection. And uh, we, we see that because in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter number two, after they rejected, Peter goes in this whole long spell, you know, and, you know, Pentecostals try to use um, Acts chapter number two for about tongues, all these different things. These are for the Jewish people. Peter's preaching to these Jewish people saying, you need to repent. You know, you just killed the Messiah. You just you just did all these things. And, you know, when you need to be baptized for the remission of sins, this is not a um, a getting saved thing. This is a this is the way you acted. You need to repent of the way that you've acted and get remission of your sins for crucifying Christ. And if you read that in his whole context, you can see what it's about. So they're shifting over um, their attention. Jesus is to the Gentile people. And what it says in the book of Romans, Romans 9 through 11, the emphasis is on the Jewish people talking about them, that their, their blindness is in part to Israel. Now, that does not mean that the church has replaced Israel by no means. They're still, God is still using them as his people. But as for the time being, he's turned his attention to the Gentile people and the Jewish people are still there. But, uh, but because they rejected, that's why his focus has been on the Gentile people. And their, blind, their blindness is in part because of that rejection. I don't know if you've ever witnessed to a, a Jewish person before, but those of you who have and uh, have experienced that the Jewish people are the hardest people in the world to witness to. And it's because they're blind in their heart. And, and something they said that was kind of crazy is, let his blood be upon our head and our children. Uh, I, that's, a, that's a very scary statement to say, and it's going to be. And that's why that the tribulation period is going to happen. It's for the Jewish people because they rejected Christ. God is going to be dealing with them at this time period and trying to turn their attention back to God. And, and that's what you see. That's why the purpose of the tribulation, you know, we wonder, okay, the rapture is going to happen. And the, then the tribulation at some point after the rapture. Um, but why does this happen? Well, it's for the Jewish people. 
And we see that because it's called uh, in Daniel chapter number nine, it says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, talking about the Jewish people. Uh, we know it also as David, David or Daniel's 70th week. Uh, it's also called in, in Jeremiah chapter number 30, verse number seven, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not the time of jer- church, the church's trouble. It's the time of Jacob's troubles. The Israel people, the Jewish people that rejected Christ, that's what that time f- period is for. And everybody else is just kind of, um, I don't know what the word is for it, but they're going to be there. They're going to be affected by it. But the primary emphasis of the tribulation is dealing with the Jewish people. And when you examine scriptures that talk about the tribulation, Matthew 24, Luke 21, these different passages, it's talking about the Jewish people and the church is never, ever mentioned. Because that's what the emphasis is. That's that's the point. Now, there that's the purpose of it. But what's the period of the tribulation? Now, this is something that we can't dive into all today, just be for time's sake, um, because that's a whole lesson in and of itself of how long is the tribulation period. Um, something we know for sure is that it's a minimum of three and a half years, which to me, and you know, we people argue all the time. Okay, how long is the tribulation? Um, all these different things. Uh, to me. Even if it's only three and a half years, that's a terrible time frame to go through. Like that's that's the way my mind is going because we're about to dive into it. But all the things that happen in the tribulation, you would want it to be three and a half years. Um, but people argue, is it seven? Is it ten? Um, I personally believe that it's seven. And there's different scriptures behind that. Too much to get into on this one lesson because we have so much to go into. Um, but that's what I believe the period of time is, is about seven years, um, because you have going through there, you have a time of peace going through the first half. And then next thing you know, the Antichrist sitting, proclaiming he is God. He, he had made an agreement with the Jewish people, cut it off in the middle and, and then starts chasing after the Jewish people trying to persecute them. And so we, there's just a bunch of different verses we could go through, but that's not what we're going to get into today. So we see the purpose of the tribulation is for the Jewish people. They rejected Christ, and so God's going to um, get their attention back to God, and that's what the emphasis is going to be in the tribulation. We see the period, I believe, to be seven years, and we're gonna, we're, we may get into that um, in the future. But I want you to notice also the pain and the principalities of the tribulation. Um, this time is... Not a great time at all. And I know a lot of people want to say that, oh, this is just a um, a metaphor. This is just things that God God's just talking like uh, in just illustrations. But honestly, that I don't believe that the Bible is talking in illustration or metaphorically at all. You know, God God will tell you when He's speaking metaphorically, and I believe um, without without any doubt at all that this is actually going to happen. All these things I'm about to mention to you. Um, and that's why salvation is so important. You should be thankful for salvation. You're not going to have to go through any of these things. And if you're not saved, get saved. You know, I don't know who all is going to watch this or stumble across this video, but if you've never received Christ, I would highly recommend that you do. So the pain and principalities of the tribulation, some things um, mentioned through the book of Revelation that's going to happen in the tribulation, um, just some crazy stuff in general. Number one, there's going to be four horsemen that bring death and hunger. You see that in Revelation chapter number six. I'm trying to make my way over here um, as I'm trying to talk. I'm not really mul- uh, much of a multitasker. And so as I'm talking and trying to do two things, I'm like, I'm focused on one thing or the other. But um, we see the four horsemen that bring death and hunger, Revelation chapter number six and eight. There's going to be great earthquakes and the sun is going to become black and the moon is going to turn into blood, Revelation six verses 12 through 7, also, or 12 through 17, also the stars are going to fall from heaven. So the darkness is literally going to cover the face of the earth while all this pain and all these things and the suffering is going to happen. It's going to be dark, which is crazy because when you talk about um, Jesus Christ um, coming as the sun, S-U-N, and while all the earth is dark, you're going through this pain, you're going through this torment, at the very end of it, Jesus Christ shows up as the light where everybody sees him. That's why it says every eye will see him. Um, this whole thing is going to be dark. And next thing you know, Jesus Christ shows up the light and everybody's just going to be looking up, seeing who, the, who, who they have pierced. You see that in Revelation chapter number one. Um, so you see the stars fall from heaven. Darkness covers the earth. You're going to have hail and fire fall to the earth and burn up th- a third of the trees and a, all the green grass is going to be burnt up. We see a third part of the sea becomes blood, Revelation chapter number 8. And a third part of the creatures in the sea are killed, Revelation chapter number 8, verse 9. A third part of the ships um, are destroyed, Revelation chapter number 8, verse 9. So we see stars falls in heaven, 
and um and it becomes like wormwood it becomes bittersweet and when the people drink it they die revelation chapter number eight verse 11. Uh, we see here also that, and, and I'm going to turn to Revelation chapter number 9 to kind of read, go through this uh, passage a little bit just because of the crazy stuff that happens in here. But we see that an angel is now given a key to the bottomless pit, and he goes down and he opens a door. We see that in Revelation chapter number 9 verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. So we, this angel goes down, he unlocks the bottomless pit. All these creatures are down in the bottomless pit and he opens it and the smoke is so much that it, it literally covers the sun. It covers the sky. Um, all this just smoke. I mean, you've been around a bonfire before all the smoke that comes from that, the black smoke and things that it covers and um, the smell that it affects all these different things. Well, this, after this pit is open, it's going to cover where you can't even see the sky to be able to see the sun and different things. And there came out of the smoke a locust upon the earth, and under them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. So we see these different creatures that come out of here, um, these beasts that come out of the bottomless pits, locusts and scorpions. Um, and the beasts were given permission to um, to hurt the people, but not the seal people. So you have the 144,000 uh, male virgin Jews, um, the people that he had sealed. Um, he said, you can't hurt those people um, or the grass or the trees. But for the five months, they were allowed to hurt people and go around and torment people. And during this five months, um, let's see here in verse number six, or verse number five, and to them, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was at the torment as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Imagine a time in the tribulation where you have these creatures coming out of the bottomless pit, stinging people, but and, and you have a desire to die. You're hurting so bad, you desire to die. You're trying to commit suicide. But that's a time during five months that people would not be able to die. Imagine trying to get away from this pain. You're jumping off buildings. You're trying to commit suicide. You're trying to do something, but you cannot die. Imagine that. Such a, a crazy time during this, people. That's why you don't want to be a part of this. You want to get out of it as quick as you can. Um, let's see here. These locusts and beasts are described. Uh, it's just crazy how they're described in Revelation 9, 7 through 10. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and the faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Talk about a crazy time. Talk about a crazy time just in general. Some other things that are going to happen during the tribulation. Four angels um, are bound right now in the Euphrates River, which is kind of a crazy thing to think about. But they're going to be loosed, and they're going to slay a third of mankind and lead an army of 200,000. You see that in Revelation 9, uh, verses 15 through 21. Um, and a, th a third of the people, because of these um, these different beasts and these angels, um, a third of them are going to be uh, killed by fire, smoke, and brimstone. And you know what the crazy thing about it? After going through all this pain, after going through all these different things, it literally says in verse number 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented, repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of, of their murders, nor of the sorceries or of their fornication of their thefts. All these things that are happening to them, all the pain that they're going through, man's kind is still so bad in that state that they would not repent. And that's, that's a crazy thing to me that, that you get to that place in your heart. 7,000 die in Revelation 11, verse 13. Um, another crazy thing that can happen in, during the tri tribulation period is you're damned to hell by taking the mark of the beast. You can no longer get saved after you've taken that, that mark of the beast. Revelation chapter number 13, verse 16 through 7, um, which will be hard because during this tribulation period, you cannot buy, you cannot drink, you cannot eat, you can't do anything without the mark of the beast. 
And so imagine not being able to do anything, not being able to not be able to do anything unless you take this. But if you do take it, you can no longer be saved. You're you're damned for the rest of eternity, and have to go to hell. And you, you also that also um, you lose your salvation. Aren't be able to get saved if you worship um, the beast as well. Men are scorched with great heat, and they gnaw their tongues for pain. In Revelation chapter number sixteen, eight through eleven. Yet, and, and it says there in Revelation 16 that they still did not repent. They even blasphemed God after all this pain and all these things that they went through. It even says every island fled away and no mountains were found. Revelation 16, verse 20. It even says, this is crazy. It even says hailstones that weighed 80 pounds. You, you see that where Revelation 16, 21 hailstones falling from heaven that weighed 80 pounds are falling and hitting man um, from heaven. This is all the craziness, and there's there's a little bit more than that, but this is all the craziness going to happen from the tribulation. You should not be here. <laughs> uh, if, you've, if you've never gotten saved, please get saved. So we see that there is the period of the tribulation. We see the purpose of it. We, all, we see the pain in the principalities, but I want you to notice lastly, and this should be encouraging to you, the preachers of the tribulation. We see Moses and Elijah, or who I believe is Moses, Moses and Elijah, Revelation chapter number 11. They come here and they preach for 1,260 days to mankind, and they're testifying, and they're trying to reach people. You also see in Revelation chapter number 14, verse 6 through 12, uh, and I'll go ahead and read it right quick for you. Revelation 14, verse 6 through 12, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them, that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. And it goes on talking about these other angels that followed him, um, and the different things like this. And when you read in verse number 12 as well, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God, and keep the faith of Jesus. You know what the amazing thing about this is? is that God is still not willing that any should perish. You know, even during the tribulation time, when, you know, we talked about all the craziness that was happening, all the pain that was happening, all the, um, the, the demonic influences and all the things that are going to be happening. God still sends preachers to come there and preach to them the everlasting gospel and to testify unto them and all these things saying, hey, just worship God. Even during all this time, God is still not willing that any should perish. Even during God's wrath, he's still trying to reach people. I mean, you have the 144,000 Jews um, that are saved in, or, or that are, are rescued, and you even have old te- or tribulation saints that make it through there. And God wants people to t- come to him and to turn to him. But oftentimes, it's mankind's heart that doesn't. And it leads us to astray, leads us where we have a hard heart and we repent not. So that's that was our lesson for today. I'm talking about the tribulation period. I know we have so much more we could dive into as far as the period, um, all these different things. I feel like it'd be a very lengthy topic. Um, honestly, you could spend a lot of the theology class um, just on this topic alone, on the end times. Um, but just wanted to give you kind of an overview of some things that are going to happen, um, just kind of some crazy stuff. And hopefully this was a help to you. Hopefully you're excited that this is something you're not going to go through and you can warn other people, hey, don't don't go through this. Don't don't go through the tribulation. Don't go to hell. Receive Jesus Christ while you still can. And this should give us more of a motivation to reach people um, in the time and day in which we live. So hopefully this was a help to you. Hopefully this was thought provoking. And I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. We look forward to diving into um, if we don't do a second part, we'll be diving into the millennium, which I'm very excited about. And I think you should be as well. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.